Hello, hello, hello. On this good, what's today? Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm here the same day every week, and I don't know what day it is. Hi, people. Welcome. Um, I'm gonna give a little bit more time for folks to get in here before I introduce our guests. Plural. My first time having two guests on at once, but I thought. It was a fitting occasion. So as usual, you know, I ask to share and like so we can bring more people into the room. Is that what we call it? The room? Like, is this clubhouse? What? Like, no. Right. I I don't know. Share and like the video, please. And then I'm going to get into the intros. Thanks for the likes. I see some likes. Um, Yeah, come on in the room. All right. All right. All right. So today we have two lovely young ladies with us. Um, Up first, I am going to introduce Miss Ashley Spencer who you all know her as probably the 400 meter hurdler, 2016 bronze medalist. She once ran the four, still runs the 400. Let me not even say once. Um, She's a 2012 world junior champ and the 2016 world indoor silver medalist. And she politely reminded me that we share two gold medals together on the four by four, one indoor 2016 and outdoor 2013. I bet she didn't think I remembered that. Um, and secondly, we have Miss Morla K. Akinison, Nigerian born. I didn't know that until I just did some research on her. Um, Nigerian born American, <laughs> 2016 gold medalist in the four by one. Um, also only the second woman ever to score in four events at an NCAA outdoor championships in consecutive seasons. She's also a four time four by one champion at the NCAAs, Morla K. Akinison and Ashley Spencer. Hey. Hi. <laughs> hey. What you guys think? What you, what you think? Nice to for my fans. <laughs> <laughs> I can't Love stand y'all. Girl. I can't stand okay. y'all. So while we get the chat going, you guys know to drop your questions in the chat. Um, we'll have some conversation, some questions. Yeah, let me figure out where I need to. Okay. We'll um, have some conversations, some questions, um, but yeah, feel free to drop your questions in the chat, continue to share and like. Um, uh oh. Oh, okay. I hear them outside. Oh. <laughs> you hear them? <laughs> yes, I couldn't tell okay. if something was bad or good. Hi, Liam. <laughs> so. The reason why I wanted to have you all on together is not just because you're members of the Bailey Bunch, which uh, guys in the chat, you guys may remember, you should remember last week we had Ashley Henderson, who's also a member of the Bailey Bunch. Today we have Ashley Spencer and Morla Kaya Kinnison from the Bailey Bunch. Y'all are probably like the inaugural like Bailey Bunch, right? Like, We're the OGs. The first ladies. We're the OGs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're the OGs. So interestingly enough, speaking of OGs, I wanted y'all on together because y'all are the ones who gave me the name Auntie. Auntie. (laughs) Auntie Tasha. Y'all started that. So I was like, we're going to have Ashley and Maura on together because that's where the whole auntie. So, yeah, I've been around the block. I've been around long enough. I was 400 meter diva. Then I became auntie because I just been around that long. This is where it came from. So, yeah, that's that's all y'all got. It was out of respect. It was out of respect. It was out of respect. Seriously. In Nigerian culture, you don't be talking to people who are like superior to you by their first name. You just can't be calling them by their first name. 
So when you address them, instead of saying like Miss So and So or Mister So and So, everybody is not calling me <coughs> Miss. Me. Everybody <laughs> is Auntie. No. Auntie. So like my mom's friends, they're auntie. If I've never met them before and they come in the house, she'll be like, say hello to auntie who up so-and-so. Like you're not just going to call someone okay, that's like I still don't know how I not your age. Because yes, not like same. My mom's friends are auntie so-and-so. You just compare me to your mom. Like I'm not that much older than y'all. Like let's be clear. It was out of respect. I'm not old it. enough to be your mother's. True. Go ahead, Marlika. No. <laughs> Ashley's you like, you got this one by yourself. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> you got it. Uh, Actually, I, I, how old are you again? Me? I'm 34. You're not going to answer. I was going to be like, it's Googleable. I was so. about to say, it's oh, actually, no, they don't hide in our age. Like, <laughs> <laughs> everything's Googleable. Right. Oh, no, you're not old enough. Never mind. Thanks. Tried it. <laughs> I just called you auntie because when I was in, I think it was my my sophomore year when I made the 2013 outdoor team. In Moscow. You in Moscow, you and Franny Fran. and Jessica Beard kind of like showed me the ropes because I was just there to run. I didn't know what I was doing. And I remember doing. I did not know. And I remember there was one day I was walking through the hallway and you stopped me. He's like, Ashley, where are you going? And I was like, I'm hungry. And he was like, the calf's this way. And I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> sorry. And then I was sitting by myself right to the table. And I was like, oh, I'm a stupid little kid. And here she go being nice to me. So, Aww. yeah. I try to be welcoming. I remember what it was like to be the, the little loner. And I was very much so a shy introvert, like, sit by myself <laughs> so i tried to extend not everybody is as welcoming as you are that's why you got auntie that's very true i feel like i sensed some shade in that but we just go keep it moving. <laughs> and i'm just gonna no no no, no no it was a compliment i mean no i know it was a compliment, was a compliment, to compliment. Me, but it sounded like some shade yeah. to others <laughs> that i'm like ah oh, we just go keep it moving <laughs> Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let's keep going along. Let's keep it going. <laughs> keep it going. Let's so keep before, going. Yeah. <laughs> before we get into my questions, there are a couple of questions that's popping up that I'm like, okay, let's let's get to it. Um, Tatlon, I see your comments post live, so I'm happy that you're you're finally able to make a live. Um, they want to know how long has the Bailey Bunch been a thing? Or he Ooh. or she, sorry. Yeah, they were the Bailey Bunch. The Bailey Bunch started what 2017, when it was it was just me that had went pro 15, and then Morla K, Kristan, and or no Morla K and Courtney went pro, and then there was a couple of us on the in circuit 16. in 16 after the Olympics, and it was just like yeah, it was 16 in the Olympics when we all had made the Olympic team, and that's kind of just how we blossomed into the Bailey Bunch and it's just been a thing ever since. Which for clarification, the Bailey Bunch is in reference to Tanja Buford Bailey, who is the coach of these young ladies. And she was the, I have it in my notes. I have it in my notes. Hold on. 1996 bronze medalist in the 400 hurdles. So mm -hmm. yes, the Bailey Bunch. It's also like a play on words of the Brady Bunch. If people are old enough to know what that is, I don't I know. I think y'all are old enough to know what the Brady Bunch is, but okay. Come we on. definitely know the Brady Bunch. I don't know what it we is. Just that, you're, that you're not that much <laughs> older than us. So just establish. <laughs> <laughs> so gosh, I should try to play us. Uh, just a little bit. Shout out to my <laughs> <laughs> so I had to get y'all back. I mean, more she so said, more like she said, more like was the one throwing the shade. Like, yeah, my mom's friends are auntie. I'm like, hold on. I'm just saying just that here. it's it's a respect <laughs> thing. She's gonna get you on the track, right? It's it's gonna gonna get I'm just gonna get pinched. I'm just gonna shut up. It's fine. Shout it's out fine. to it's my fine. moderator Natalie holding down the chat. Thank you for joining us. Um, I also see a cash app that came through. Stacy, thank you for your support. Appreciate y'all. Um, all right. Y'all need my cash app too? It's dollar sign. I was just about bronze. to say. 
<laughs> we couldn't hear you over I'm pretty it. More sure like I was talking over it. <laughs> okay, shut up, bro. Dollar sign bronze medalist. I accept all payments of I any think that amount. Only accepts one kind of payment. Oh, I accept any amount. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> anyway, let's let's get the conversation going. So, okay. Ashley, tell us a little bit about so 2013. You made the team in the mm-hmm. Open 400. That year, were you also the NCAA champ? Yes. Yes. And you were also like a freshman or sophomore, right? You were young. First year, I was a, a sophomore. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so so tell us yeah. about how you came from being a quarter miler, obviously a very good one, to be NCAA champ and then to make the team in the Open quarter. Um, and then – to then now be a specialized and and in 2016 you ran both the four and the 400 hurdles at trials like yeah wow. I, was on you know, I always say that we have to be a little bit crazy to do what we do but you're clearly a lot of bit of crazy tell us about it yeah <laughs> so and what people don't know is going into college i never ran an open quarter in high school not one time really? I ran not once. I ran the 100 hurdles, the 300 hurdles, the 4x1 and the 4x4 all through high school. Reason being is because my sister specialized in the 400 flat and my uncle and my aunt, who was my coaches in high school, didn't want us to bump heads. So I specialized in the hurdles and she specialized in the flat. We had an inner squad meet my freshman year where I broke Coach Bailey's 19-year-old 300 record. Okay. And in the history, yeah, it, I like it. Yeah. So with that, we went into Big Tens uh, needing points. Coach Bailey put me on the line to run the 400 um, at Big Tens, and I ended up winning. I went to Nationals indoors in the 200 because I didn't know anything about the quarter. I just ran it to run, to get points. And then we got to outdoor season, and I won Nationals. And that's just kind of how the history of my 400 kind of blossomed into – getting me opportunities that I never thought I, I never thought about going pro. I never thought about uh, being a professional athlete. I just wanted to pay for school. Mm-hmm. Um, it wasn't until I had moved to Texas when Coach Bailey had gotten the job. She had coached me into a lot of success that I really did not want to start over with somebody else. She was comfortable with me. She knew my strengths, she knew my weaknesses. So, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Mm-hmm. So I was blessed enough to get the opportunity to come to Texas, uh, signed with Nike in 2015 um, after coming off of a year of being injured. Uh, going into 2016, especially the trials, I had only ran the 400 hurdles three times in my career from high school to now I'm pro. I had only ran the 400 hurdles like three different times. I was sitting eighth in the US, I think, and who cares in the world because I'm sitting eighth at the U S like no one cares about the world at that point. And, uh, coach Bailey asked me, um, I entered you in the four and the 400 hurdles. Which one do you want to scratch? And I said, let's do both. Cause like, why not? What do I have to lose doing both? You know? So ran the open quarter, got seventh in the final and ended up being the first person to ever and make final both. I was the last person to get into the semifinal in the 400 hurdles, lane eight um, in the final. And I just got on the line knowing that I was going to have to fight for it. And that's what I did. And ever since then, it's been hard for me to focus on the 400 hurdles because I want to go back to sprinting. But I knew as soon as I go back to sprinting, I would want to go back to hurdles. So that's just kind of the short version of the history of me. So you said so many things that I was like, she's telling a story, let her, don't interrupt. But there's so many things that I want to touch on, (laughs) expound on. You made that, huh? you made that, I was blessed to go have an opportunity to run at the University of Texas transfer story. Seems so simple. You forgot because it's been so long. No, I didn't want to get into it one day because we could literally (laughs) talk about that all day. (laughs) We ain't got time. Well, no. So I want to start with, because last week when we had Ashley on, Ashley Henderson, which guys, please continue to share. We got 40 folks in here. That's We're doing good today. Let's get it up to 80. Let's double that. Share and like this video. Um, But last week when Ashley was on, she told me how like 
Like I, I was amazed at how like she transfer transitioned from professional to uh, from collegiate to professional. And, you know, her college coach was the one that said like, it's time for you to move on, helped her find Tanja. But then the story of like Tanja and her were roommates at the 96 games. And then now you're saying that like you broke Tanja's 19 year old record. So like just to Mm -hmm. hear like the little connections that started before anything was even a thought like I don't believe in mistakes I don't believe in like it's just crazy to kind of hear how like all of these things were happening without anybody knowing they're happening um but then like I'm listening to your story and I'm like so if I was that collegiate girl I've been running the 400 my whole life since I was 10 so you just broke it down like, yeah, I went to college and I hardly ever ran any 400s and I mm-hmm. was the NCAA champ my sophomore year. Like, I wouldn't like you. <laughs> at that age, <laughs> my uh, level of emotional maturity at that point, I would have been like, who the heck is this? And then going into the trials, mm-hmm. you only ran the 400 hurdles three times that year. And I was injured all 2016, almost right after Indoor Worlds in 16, I had gotten injured and I was just working my my way back. And then, sorry, Tasha. Not because, you know, now that I think about it too, (laughs) you beat me out of, I got third at Indoor Nationals that year. I was hoping you wasn't going to remember that. Now that I think I should be mad at you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I like, I'm just kidding. That was five years ago. Can we and move on? Like, there ain't nobody thinking about that. But I'm just listening, and I'm just like, I, I joked about it earlier, where I'm like, you got to be a little bit of crazy, but also to like hear. I think it's so amazing to like hear everybody's different stories because here it is, like you weren't running the 400 that long, but mm-hmm. you're still successful and on a high level. I've been running the 400 my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> and you know my story is obviously way different um mm-hmm. but yeah that's just crazy to like think that you hardly ran any 400 hurdle races to go on and become the bronze medalist I, yeah I, the the journey was the journey within itself was so up and down and back and forth that you know at some point I had to just make the decision if you're if you want to be successful in whatever whatever event you are 100 200 400 400 hurdles you have to decide that you're going to fight for it cuz no one's going to hand it to you and then on top of that i'm competing against women who have been running the 400 hurdles all they life they're not going to hand it to me and if anything and this is my mindset if i don't beat nobody else i am beating the brakes off the one who ain't never ran this event before you know what I'm saying? So I I knew people ain't worried about me, but in my head, they gunning for me regardless because I shouldn't be here. I never felt worthy enough being in the lane running the 400 hurdles, but I had something to prove. So it's a lot, but I love it. I hate it, but I love it. But I hate it. But I love it. I love it. All right. Well, we're going to It was stressful too. I'm going to take Yeah. It, yeah, cuz I'm about to get on you. I'm we're going to transition with this question. Title on one. She why would you say like I was in trouble? She said I'm about to get on you yeah, like you I was cool. like No, because I'm just, get I'm just blown away. 26 I mean 2016 was a great year for for all three of us. And I it think was. we each we yeah. individually have stories going into 2016. So we're going to get into yours more like okay? which I guess I just answered this question or maybe you got to correct me, but there seems to be some confusion about how to pronounce your name. It's Mordecai. Mordecai Kennison. Mm-mm. So you shouldn't put five letters in there that aren't even in the name. Mm-hmm. There's no D in there. I don't even know. There's no I. <laughs> There's no C. You said K. Mm-mm. No, it's an Ashley. Mordecai. Okay. A Kennison. Am I saying your last name correct? Yes, you're saying it correct. I would have corrected Five you. Five dollars if you can guess her middle name. Ago. Do you want to share your middle name? My middle name is Olua Demilala. It means it's in the Yoruba. That's my family's tribe and language that we speak. 
And it means God gives me wealth or God has given me wealth. Okay. Okay. Just love I love y'all's relationships. It seems that the relationship you formed during your pro career goes deeper than the track, which is beautiful to see. Wanda Holly, thank you for that. That. You know, Thanks, there's, Wanda. there's a lot of things that I hope to achieve with tea time, but that is one of them. We are people beyond the track and we have relationships beyond the track and I'm retiring after this year, but you know, I'll always be their auntie. Why do we have the same reaction? <laughs> <laughs> it is worth noting that Ashley and I have not just known each other since we were pros. I've known Ashley since my junior year of high school or senior year of high school. Mm-hmm. Whenever I took a college visit to the university of illinois yeah so, so. you also me. went to illinois transferred to texas bailey bunch so what i want to talk to you about is i believe in 2015 or 14 you put out a tweet right it was actually it was actually in 2011 oh dang. the first that one the first crazy. one Huh? I think the one that went viral. Yeah, it was actually in two- the first one. The one that I quote tweeted was in 2011. I was, I don't, I, was I a senior? I was a senior in 2011. And I don't remember what the tweet says. I can, oh, I can find it. It's pinned on my Twitter. I can it, find yeah, it. I was about to say, it's, <laughs> it's something like, and I, I was going to tie it up to, to be able to post it, but you know, I had to take my son to a last minute doctor's appointment. But neither here nor there. It was something about you basically manifested that you were going to be at the Olympics. Okay. Yep. I tweeted on July 28th, 2011. In 2016, I will be 22, graduated from a school I have not chosen yet, and going to the Olympics. And then on July 30th, 2016, we were actually at relay camp, Tasha. Mm -hmm. We were in wherever relay camp was, in Houston or whatever. And I quote tweeted it and said, I tweeted, is that where it was? Yes. We were at Prairie View. Yeah. Don't do the HBCU like that. Oh. We was at Prairie View. You don't I remember, remember and we I ran didn't... at that track this summer. You don't, you didn't feel like this this feels familiar. Nope. Okay. No. Well, I'm gonna stop you right there because <laughs> I I I only stop you there because I I have a similar experience where like my first Olympics. I don't really remember much. So to now hear you say like, oh, that's where we were. I'm like, girl, we just raced there this summer. You don't remember that that's where we did our training camp. But like, yeah, yeah, it's that's not what I remember. I have. It's not fleeting. I have memories, good and bad from those relay practices. But like the location couldn't have told you. Okay, I'm gonna let you finish. I blocked it out. I have. I have selective memory. I don't remember anything bad that's happened in my life. Um, that could be a good thing. And then I quote tweeted it. <laughs> I tweeted that five years ago. It's 2016. I graduate from Texas in December and I'm going to the Olympics next week. And then it blew up. It went crazy. It went crazy before like now getting 200,000 retweets on Twitter is nothing. But five years ago, getting 200,000 retweets on Twitter was like not a thing. It was everywhere. Facebook. ESPN, Good Morning America, like it went everywhere. It was like, it like mm-hmm. blew up. And I was not yeah. expecting that either. Yeah. But I think it's it's a true testament um, to speaking things into existence, first of all. Um, mm-hmm. But then also like I remember 2008 and even 16 when people asked like, so what is it like to go to the Olympics? And it's like, oh, I'm living a dream. Like I remember in 96, what? <laughs> watching the olympics where i was clearly why were you were y'all born in 96 y'all don't even have memories from 96 like you were born but you just don't remember anything i was three okay yes yeah i was at three years old so i was watching your coach and mj and jjk and gail devers all of those guys um and i was like oh i want to be an olympian and to to like live it But then to see that, like, you not only, like, said it to yourself, like, you put it out there (laughs) and, like, it really Mm -hmm. came back and came into fruition. And then I'd I'd like to speak to, like, your experience with Bela, Bela, with with Tanja, (laughs) because I do, (laughs) I see you all's relationship, um, you guys that aren't here, weren't here, or I think most of you 
we got some new people here this week. Um, we all train on the same track and I see that you all have a very intimate um, relationship with your coach. And I think she does a really good job of like speaking life and encouraging you all on the track. Um, and I think that, you know, that is definitely like a key piece in, you know, a athlete coach relationship. So I just think it's, it's interesting that like Ashley had her journey to 2016 and obviously the journey continues. Um, and then you had your journey to 2016 that are different, but like kind of like intertwined and like same coach and you guys were there to see the other through injuries and, you know, graduation and all of those things. So I wanted you to share a little bit about that. Sorry. Okay. I go first. Ashley paused for too long. Um, <laughs> it was for you. No, that was for you, Marla <laughs> Kay. <laughs> oh, it was for me? <laughs> Ashley and I lived together. I didn't know if it was for both of us, if it was one of us. <laughs> Ashley and I lived said together. Said Marla Kay. Go ahead. Oh, I was, I toned it out. Ashley and I lived together going into the 2016 Olympic Games. And that year in general, was it that year? Yeah, that year at the NCAA meet, I had what I would call like an underwhelming performance. I think that other people would have been like, you got second. How can you say that's bad? And I was, I was not happy. I was not pleased. I was very frustrated going into Olympic trials and like not in the greatest place. And I think the awesome thing about Coach Bailey is that she sees all of us as people first and athletes secondary. And so she makes sure that the person is okay before making sure that the athlete is okay. Cause if the person is okay, you can't compete. And she really did a good job of getting me back to a mental state where I felt confident in myself and that I could like go on and compete. I went into the Olympic trials in 2016 and I don't think that like a soul thought that I would even make the final. Like it was just, I just don't think people thought it would happen. And I ended up getting fourth in that race with, with like mm -hmm. some, gosh, what was like the fastest 100 meter race in US history where the top three all ran 10 seven that we've never seen that before. And I got fourth in that race, fresh out of college, just outperforming what I even thought that I could do, but what I believed I could do because of what Coach Bailey helped me through in like the weeks prior to that. So I just love having her as a coach, as a friend, as a mother figure, because she's just so reliable. That's the word I would use to describe her. She's reliable. Yeah. I, and it shows. Um, yeah, I'll be seeing y'all in the call room and stuff. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Not the call room, the warm up area. But I can definitely see that, like, Tanja definitely brings the energy. Um, so I'm I'm a pivot. <laughs> I don't usually do this, but I feel like I can do this with y'all. We're going to have a little pop culture talk because I see a comment floating around in the comments that I think this is what they're referring to. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. More like I looks confused. I, I'm, I don't see the comment. I'm looking for it. It says we, we know, know about, about men, men and, and the, the third, third person. person. Jeez. still confused i don't know what they're talking about actually you know what they're talking about i think i do are y'all talking about the the dude that does all the relationship advice <laughs> ended up cheating Derek on his Jackson. wife mm -hmm. there you go Derek jackson oh is that what they're talking about <laughs> that that's man what was, i took it as i thought i thought they were talking about something relevant to us and i'm like what like that's why i said we're gonna go off the track and talk a little pop culture <laughs> Oh, okay. Lord. See, I'm like. <laughs> do you, okay. do you all have, have, do you all have any opinions? I don't trust no man that tries to tell people about relationship, how a woman should act. How about y'all get yourselves together? Because that woman went on live in her bonnet on. That means she's been fed up. Okay, <laughs> she's <laughs> no. She didn't put on nightmare mascara. She didn't even take her bonnet mascara off. Mascara on. We're barefaced. We're she, in our, yeah. our glory. Right, but she was with her husband to address cheating allegations, and you know her hair was done, but she didn't take her bonnet off. She could not care less if she tried about what that man had to say. Go, Marley. I wouldn't have done it. 
I would have <laughs> I would have been like, nah. I would have been like, nah, figure it out yourself. I'm not getting on a live with you so that you can tell the entire world that you cheated on me. Like how like how dumb do I look? Like, I wouldn't have done it. And then he got like, the nerve to have So my mom can wait. So my mom can watch it, so my dad can watch it too. But you're gonna get on live and put all of your business out there for everybody to see by yourself. I just would have done it. I don't like if you want to go on live, go ahead. I'm not gonna sit next to you. I got the nerve to hold her hand. Okay, they you they was holding hands tight. (laughs) Turns out it was not a knit. It was a knit cap, not a bonnet. So I stand corrected. I thought it was a bonnet too. I thought it was a bonnet. Um, (laughs) (laughs) it might as well been bonnet. I, 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 admittedly, I can't get past like the first 15 seconds of any of the videos. Like I saw that he like responded to, so you know, like how he'll like respond to like a cheating story or, you know, this person did that or ladies don't do that. He actually responded <laughs> to the live of him and his wife. <sighs> And I'm just like the narcissism of it all. I just. Can I, someone send me the link of where these men are buying the audacity? I need some. It's, it's, for, sale. Need some. it's for sale. It's for sale. I need. And where is rich? Yes. Including Derek Jackson. It okay. I just need to know. Yo, he was keeping her hostage with that hand grip. And listen, I hate to laugh at her pain because. As you all know, I'm studying clinical mental health. and But I was literally watching the video like the first 15 seconds, like I, th- I said. And I was like, yo, blink if you're in danger. Like. Okay. <laughs> that woman wanted everything in her power for it to be over with. Over. Over. But like, like all seriousness, I always wonder like, what are we missing? Because she has friends. Like she has some women in her life that are probably asking her questions and like, what side we're not seeing and like that that can't be it like that can't be the full whole story but from what they've mm-hmm. shown us it's not okay at all it's not okay at all it's and that's okay. why like i hate to laugh at her pain because i i do think that like there's obviously a cycle of some sickness there um from like ugh, but I, listen abuse ain't just putting your hands on somebody i'm a just that's right. I'm going to just say that. Um, the live was all about him recapturing his power over wife and followers in third person. Stacy, yeah, 100%. Y'all need to loan her a pair of sprint track shoes so she can jet. She she needs to get <laughs> okay. out of there. She does. Yeah, get out of there. <laughs> she does. She does. I, uh, Real talk, how would y'all handle that if, if that was your friend? Honestly, um... The, the thing about it is like you sometimes people have to go through certain things. So like you do what you can in terms of like, I don't want to see you get hurt. I don't want to see you be harmed. Know that I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, but she is clearly to the point where it ain't nothing. Nobody can tell her she going to leave when yeah. she's ready to leave. Cause imagine mm-hmm. sitting on a live and you got millions of people laughing at how you look, how you sound, the things that you're saying, Mm-hmm. And you're standing by this, like she's gonna leave when she's fed up. But I think those that love her need to let her know that she's loved, and I'm here when, if you stay, and I'm here when you leave. But I, I do think we have this culture of like, I just, I can't deal with you, and isolation is the the nail in the coffin. Don't isolate her. You gotta mm-hmm. surround her with love. And that's another thing that what Mother Kay was saying. Like, we don't know. Like, maybe her friends have been like, you need to get rid of this man. He is out here wilding. And mm-hmm. her husband convinced her. Them ain't your friends. Your friends are trying to convince you to leave your husband. Isolation, Those aren't your friends. Like, you just do. don't know. That's Sis got to leave. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Or that could have happened a long time ago. And she hasn't left because she feels like she has nowhere to go. Because she's... I- She's isolated herself where he's isolated her from her friends, her family. I just feel like there's a lot that we may not know. We don't know. No, there's there's a lot that we absolutely don't know. (laughs) Absolutely. Well, one thing thing I'm very confident about is there's going to be a point where she's given herself inadvertently a platform. 
So there's going to be a point where she absolutely tells her side and she might, she, I mean, she might profit of it. She might profit off of it. Like my husband cheated on me, read my book. Like you just don't know. Listen, pay me for or my pain. It could all okay. be, I don't know. Pay me for my pain. Okay. She has some kids I'm to saying. support. <laughs> pay me for my pain. Go on and write that book. I'll buy it. I'll buy her book. I ain't buying his. Okay. I might not read it, but nah, I'll buy it just to support. Because I know what it's like to be his mom. All right. Um, don't isolate her. That sound that sound advice, isolating her just extends his power. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's let's get back to uh <laughs> some some that was fun. Less juicy talk. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so we've got Texas Relays coming up this weekend. Shall we talk about it? Shall we more like yeah. hopping on the four by four with us? Was was hell no. Nah. I'm sorry. This is probably a PG channel. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> Period. Drop the mic. <laughs> Ashley's reading sorry, the comments. I just seen. I just saw <laughs> <a> comment. Something. <laughs> <laughs> okay well let okay, me pull that well, up let your... me pull that up Hang let on. me pull that up hold on oh and this Ooh. is a faithful vj vj and he's in the uk so he came on a little bit late too so he can't he's he's serious about this proposal i have a marriage Proposal to Mordecai. We need to get this Nigerian Caribbean wedding going with Kid Nostra. I remember. Mm-hmm. You're going to have no stresses, your wedding vows. You can't even write your own. Damn. Sheesh. Excuse me. Aye. Bang. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, ay, ay. I'm going to keep talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. Not the horse. <laughs> Oh, my, my <laughs> okay, we well, left this topic, um, but I do want to address this because now nah, I don't think she will make a profit because it's the norm. Unfortunately, it is the norm, and I hope that we fix that very soon. Mm-hmm. Hi, yeah, yeah. Um, Coach SDW, I think last week you said you're going to be at Texas Relay, so I'm assuming you're down there now. Um, our spectators, yes, spectators are allowed this weekend. They're just, um, doing like group seating. Like you have to sit with your group, people from your household. Um, let's see what, what else did I miss? Um, oh, wow. Half of Texas A&M 4x4 team won't be running due to COVID at Texas Relays. They got COVID? Hold on now. Wait a minute now. Okay. okay. Texas A&M. Who has so COVID? Two, Texas A&M? Two people. The men or the women? Or right. just like... They just asked the same thing. Is that both the men's and the women's? Oh. Oh, we if got I had somebody to... from Hawaii in here. Aloha. Okay, okay. Aloha. Okay. What's up? Okay, so let's let's get back to this Texas relays. Ashley, how are you feeling about well more like hey, so you're not doing the four by four with us? Hundred No, but I am running a four by one and a two hundred. Oh, you're running a two hundred. Okay. Ashley? Yeah. I unfortunately don't think I will be able to compete, but we're looking for a replacement for the four by four, Tasha. Um because of I, I really, my, I'm really it will not, not be me because when I looked at that schedule and realized that the four by four is right after the 200, <laughs> I was like, Hold mm, on, like sis. right after hold it's literally on. like walk, walk back. Don't even put your don't even walk back on, don't put your foot back on, just walk forward, just keep just, going, just stay here at the finish Have, line, ma'am. Exactly, <laughs> but um, right now I'm kind of dealing with some uh stuff going on with my Achilles and I'm Looking to be opening in the 400 hur- opening in the 400 hurdles at Prairie View next week. Um, so I, uh, thinking about giving myself caution. Yeah, I don't want to do something to worsen my Achilles. You know, doing a relay, even though as much as I love Texas relays and as much as I um love competing at my home track, I am looking three four months ahead. So. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, we will make that decision um, today, actually. Mm-hmm. Wait and see what Coach Billy has to say about it. But um, I might be missing out on this year's Texas Reelers. Okay. But I'll be there cheering y'all on. We'll miss yeah. you. The women got contact traced. Okay. Guys, okay. there are 53 people in here. The, we maxed What's at up, 60 y'all? with Tyson Gay. I think this is like the second highest that we've had in here at one time. Let's keep it going. Keep sharing. Keep liking. Let's bring some folks in the room. Let's tell y'all friends. We're that good tea. We're talking about <laughs> culture, track. Um, there will be a live stream for the relays. Uh, I'll look for they it and post it on. in my stories. It, it should be on Longhorn Network. Yeah, it, it is yeah, on Longhorn, Longhorn Network, Network, but only if you live in Texas, right? Or in Austin, is Longhorn. But Network. if you have like, if you have like ESPN app or Plus or whatnot, you can watch it. Okay, I stand corrected. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, yeah, time no oh. high school, so the meet's gonna go really fast. Yep, very very true. Guys, I can't be talking about the Nigerian Federation on um recording things. I love Nigeria <laughs> yeah. as a country. And leave it. I was just looking at this. I was just looking at these comments. Purr. I'm very proud to be Nigerian. That's it. That's all I have to say. That's all. Okay. Okay, so with that, the last question that I have, and then, you know, in the chat, feel free to continue to drop your questions. What do you ladies do off the track? Like, any businesses, hobbies? What don't we know about Ashley and Morlakay? Well, I have a couple of things going on. I am currently a brand ambassador for a London-based lingerie company called Nubian Skin. If you guys yeah. haven't, You're killing if you guys it. haven't, please go and shop. They are nubianskin.com. They're on Urban Outfitters. They're on um, there's one more that they just signed with. Anyway, um, ASOS. Um, I love working with them. Those ladies are great. So I recently started working with them on some content creations with them. I'm looking to expand that a little bit. Um, I am a brand ambassador for, well, I can't reveal that yet, but I got a co- I actually have a couple brand ambassadoring things for my natural hair that I'm working on that me and my agent are kind of negotiating. Um, I have an announcement coming up within the next couple um couple of weeks what's what's um, your I, um your hair instagram page of uh, the curl queen the queen's curls rather the queen's curls mm-hmm. is it right yeah mm-hmm. the queen's curls. You said it's dope. the queen's curls um it's all about me and butterfly that's what i named my hair my natural hair journey being a natural haired athlete um and i'm also developing a swim line that is taking me through hell and high water but um i'm really taking yeah i'm really taking my time with that and um it's really coming along nicely and i'm excited for that to develop into um what it needs to be so i'm really trying to expand my um my brand ambassadorships, uh, my content creations. I'm getting into that. I'm working as a manager for one of my friends, trying to expand her brand in the gaming world. So I kind of have my hands in eight different pops. Yeah, you know, trying to see what I'm good at, what I'm not good at, that sort of thing. All right, Maura? Um, Tatlone said, wait a minute, didn't I run on the relay heat with Team USA when the time was dropped because of the We bump? were going to get to it. We were going to get to it. I saw it. I absolutely did. <laughs> I saw and, that and I was like, and you are ready. <laughs> you no are on go. <laughs> we were going to get to it. <laughs> no, I read the comment and I was just like, yeah. I guess I have a really interesting 2016 Rio story. Anyway. Yes, I was. Story in 30 seconds. I was running the pre- prelim of the 4 by one at the Olympic game in Rio. And our second leg, Allison Felix, got bumped by um, the Brazilian girl to her inside as she was trying to get the baton to our third leg, English Gardner. And it caused the baton to, I don't know, hit the ground, the, the 
the exchange did not happen. But because Allison is a vet in this sport, she told English, like, take the baton. And she picked it up. They finished the pass in the zone correctly. English brought me the baton. I crossed the finish line. And I was thinking, like, what was the point? That was dumb. We shouldn't, like, there was just no need to do that. But it was because Allison knew at the time that we would be able to protest because she knew she got bumped. Obviously, we didn't know at the time that she got bumped. She knew that she got bumped, but she knew that we had to complete the relay in order for us to actually be able to go ahead and protest. With the protest, they allowed us to run by ourselves. They had us run the same order, the same four people, the same lane, everything exactly the same, but by ourselves a few hours later or several hours, several hours later, we came back to the track and we were running for one of the time slots. So we had to be one of the two fastest time positions to get into the final. And then we ended up running the fastest time out of everybody that ran the prelim that day and to make the final. So it was fun. I got some great pictures of me solo on the track with like the Olympic rings on it. it was a great <laughs> I had to. That's it. I had to. You did it. You I did, did it. I did. Okay. Because homeboy. Are we in the club? A girl or a guy. Homeboy, homegirl. Yeah. They came through with a little bit of shade. And Morla K was like, I'm going to get you together real quick. Like, oh, yeah, you yes. Them up. <laughs> and this is why they hate Team USA. Because yeah. one thing we know is that y'all are out to get us. And so because yeah. mm-hmm. we know that, we go over and over and over the rules. Yeah. They they, they, <laughs> they might not know, but listen to what Morla K said. <laughs> Allison knew she got bumped. We got to finish this race in order for us to be able to protest to come back and run. So Allison told you to pick that, told English to pick the stick up, run your ass around this track. Aretha would have had a talking to to y'all. They they did not finish the race. That is always one of, we have team orientations, meetings, whatever. We hate going to the meetings because no matter how many times you've been on the team, it's the same meetings, but we go over all of those rules. Guys. Sure finish do. the race so that if we have to protest we got a leg to stand on i don't care if you yep. know you ran out of the zone finish the race we're gonna go protest and do what we can do we're team usa yep. we know the target is on our back so we gotta know the rules to make sure that we can go in there and fight for y'all and that's what mm-hmm. happened and that's then you happened. had to you had to run you had to beat two teams and y'all was like, F that. We about to beat all of y'all. Put us in this final. Everybody. And we're going to win from lane one. And what? Everybody. Y'all still don't like us. Ew. Nuts. Period. So now I'm, I'm going to do it on myself. Because you came in here with the shade and we're going to get y'all all the way together. <laughs> Thank you. That's what vets do. Everybody yep, was sure upset. Is. Probably embarrassed to run on the track by themselves, and Allison. And think about how quickly we were she not had to think about that too. Like, no, no, get up and finish the race. Very, yeah, very. But we were not embarrassed. It was a great time. You, we had literally the entire world watching us. It was like it was fun. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Anyway, before this, we were talking about something else. What was the? Yeah, question? I wanted to know what your. What are you doing off the track? Anything cool that we should know about? Anything we need to go buy, support? I wish I had something for y'all to buy. Um, <laughs> off the track? Right. <laughs> because that, that would mean you were giving me money. Off the track, exactly. I'm staying, I'm, I guess, you know, I'm staying on the track while I'm also back in February, a month ago now, ooh, almost two months ago now. I had mm-hmm. the very first Kennison Elite Invitational in Chicago. It was a high school in. Invitational at the Chicago Gately Indoor Track. Oh, yeah. Congratulations um, on that. It was I saw a that. Huge... Thank you. It was a huge success. There was over 300 high school athletes that participated at the meet, and it's going to become a thing that's yearly. I actually just got an email today solidifying my date for the meet in 2022. Hopefully, it's going to move outdoors as well, and then it'll still be in Chicago. And I'm also working on a nonprofit because I love this country of Nigeria so much. Um, But I'm not ready to share all the details of that yet, but it is a nonprofit with the goal of helping the Nigerian Federation become strong in track and field from um, a very youth age. So that's what I'm working on. Nice, nice. I love it, I love it. Y'all know I love it. Play the applause thing. Okay, okay. 
We love Thank you, Ashley. The youth. We love helping the youth. It's all about the youth. It's the future. It is. Uh, Tatlone says, I don't know if you are he or she. I'm sorry. They were not being shady. I'm sorry. We're just sensitive about our, so I took it as shade. But if you weren't being oh. shady, apology. Not even the apology. My apology. I'm sorry. <laughs> I took it as shade, too. I took it as, like, shade. We're just, we're just I got sensitive the about really our fast. stuff. That's all. But we're happy you're here and happy to have the conversation and tell the story firsthand. Um... All right. So Morla K, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, definitely keep us posted on your track meet and your foundation, your nonprofit. I don't know if it's going to be a foundation or what, but you know, I also- It will be. Okay. I'm in the nonprofit space. I don't know if I have much advice because that is kicking my butt, but <laughs> if there's ever a way that we can collaborate, I would love that. Um so I saw a couple of questions before I let y'all go. I'm going to take you up on that. So I hope that wasn't one of those. Um, I'm going to just no. say this polite thing for the camera. It's okay, not cool. Empty cool. Or veiled. No, I totally mean it. <laughs> okay. Cause I'm going to take you up on that. Okay. Um, mm-hmm. Do you speak Yoruba? Did I say that right? Yoruba. Yoruba. Okay. If yes, do you find it beneficial because Yoruba is one of the languages that has declined in numbers by not being passed on even in Nigeria? If no, also, how do you feel about that? No, I don't speak Yoruba. And um, I'm recently more bothered by it than I ever have been before in life. Simply for what you just said, it is a language that's declining. And it's a culture that is declining, especially in the U.S., more so than Nigeria, obviously. But I came to the U.S. very young. I was only two, two and a half. Um, and my parents did not want me to be confused because I was going to daycare right away because they were both working. Um, so they spoke English to me in hopes that when I went to school, I wouldn't be asking for something in a different language and be misunderstood or not, not understood at all because I was not speaking the language. So I'd never really learned to speak, but I could understand pretty well. But the last several years being away from my family and all of our Nigerian family, that's also in Chicago. That's where my family lives, Chicago. I have realized that I'm understanding even less and less and less, and um, I'm gonna do something about it. One of my like, she's my, she's basically my little sister. One of my really young girls, she took Yoruba lessons over quarantine with someone over Zoom, and I heard her speaking, and I was shocked. Like I was like, wow, she like she's good. like fluent now. Yeah. Yes, I was shocked. Like, wow. and obviously she was living at home with her parents as well. My AirPod just fell out. She was living at home with her parents, so she was able to practice with them as well. But I need to do something about it. Yeah, I wonder, because um, I, I noticed with myself, um, there are certain things, because you said now now you kind of care and you're disappointed mm-hmm. about that. Whereas like with me, like being involved in like issues like Black Lives Matter and like really delving into like what our history actually is versus what you know, the textbooks, right. Um, you have a different, um, appreciation and care for it differently as you get older. Mm -hmm. So it it sounds like a similar thing for you where it's like, you kind of want to continue to preserve your, your heritage, your, your ethnicity. Yep. Yeah. Um, man, there were a couple of good questions up here. Okay. This is the one that I wanted to ask. James Stewart asked 2021 Olympic games will occur. Without any overseas spectators, how will that affect you and or the performances of your teammates? Many dream families would be there, such as Alice and Felix and you. Um, I'll start off. I, My eyes are kind of watering because <laughs> I can't imagine being in Tokyo without my son. Um, and so I, I don't know if you guys saw the email from our um, CEO of the USOPC right it uh, yes Mm -hmm. uso USOPC. um it kind of sounds like they're gonna fight for like some sort of like maybe a family member or something um i literally cannot imagine being at the olympics the olympics without my family like that to me is like the biggest part of the games is having that moment with my families my family and then the thought of like my son not being there, like he's coming to Japan. He might not get in the stadium, but he's coming to Japan. <laughs> so, um, 
Yeah, I, I, I and I can't. Japan can fill the stadium themselves because Japan is a, such a populous country. But um, the thought of a no family at the games like that's it's devastating to me. Ladies, your thoughts? Oh, I feel the opposite because when when my family came to the 2016 Rio Olympics. I saw them when they got there and I saw them the next day, but I told them until I, until I run the final or until I'm done competing, y'all don't know me. Can't talk to me. Don't call me. Don't come up to, I'm not here. You're not here. Cause I'm here to focus. So like with my family it's sad because you never know when, when is going to be your last time making the Olympics, yeah. you know, you, you don't know, but I think it's okay for me. Cause the the first Olympic team I tried out for, I made it. The first, I, I got a medal. My family was there and it was really, really special. So I think it's, although it's sad having two parents who have compromised immune systems and knowing the what's happening in the world, I think it's for the best. I would rather have my parents alive than in the stands, you know, watching me run a track meet. Um, it's sad though, because there's really nothing more special than to share any moment you have at the Olympic games with your family. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, right now it's, it's more important to do the things the right way. Yeah. The right way. I feel a combination of what both of y'all said, because I feel you Ashley, but my family knows if you are here for a track meet, I don't know you until I'm done racing. So you go, you're going to have to figure out the hotel and the stadium and the tickets and the food and everything and just figure it out. Like, yep. don't stress me out about that. But no. my family usually does a very good job of doing that. And if they were allowed to be in the stadium, I know that like 1000% they would be there. And I remember in Doha in 2019, I was at the start line for a hundred and I knew my parents' seats were like by the start line. And I was like nervous standing there in the for the very first round. And so I start looking to where I know their seat should be. And I think my parents saw me looking for them. And my dad gets up and starts like waving his hand so I could see him and like looking to the side and like seeing my parents there. It gave me like a sense of like peace and comfort and just knowing that like they don't care if I come dead last in this prelim heat right now. I didn't. I made it to the next round. But like they don't care if I came dead come dead last in this prelim heat right now. They're here to support me because they love me and they want to see me do my thing. And like, not only am I losing that, I they're losing it as well. They're losing to the ability, the privilege to come watch me compete. And so that's heartbreaking to me because like, those are the two people more than anything. I'd be like, gosh, like, can my mom and dad come? Like, please, like, that's it. With you. And my punk ass, my, my eyes just watered when you said that. Because... <laughs> <laughs> They because really did. Like, I no. was like looking and I was like, yep, I found them. To this day, it doesn't matter how big. I have found my mother in the Penn Relay Stadium. Like. You just know. Yeah. Like, you just, you just so, like, feel it. Like, you know. The idea of being at the Olympic Games, the biggest stage of our careers. And, yeah. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I hope, I hope, um, yeah. but you got to look at it as a test of faith. Yeah. The Do you believe you got it? Well, let me tell you something. Hold on now. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause 2020 <laughs> was okay. a test and 2021 is proven to continue to be a test. So God, just tell me how long this test is going to be. Cause I'm right. almost tapped out. <laughs> I'm almost tapped out. <laughs> <laughs> do I get a break, Lord? Something like, what? Say, come Stop. on, take your foot up. I mean, I just <laughs> my neck, Lord, my neck, my neck. I just, gosh, you found your mom in the pen relays. Mm -hmm. That's elite. Yeah, Coach so, Fry yep. used to get frustrated with me because, and and he actually one time told my mom like, I don't think you should come to the meets anymore because my mom was still coming to like, I mean, she was coming to like SECs and national the big meets. Um, and then when she lived in Georgia, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was easy for her to come to some of like those meets in that region. Um, but yeah, I, I would be on the starting line and I would find her. <laughs> I would it's find funny. her. 
The starting line of the Olympics, I don't know if y'all remember, probably not, but the 400 hurdles, it started raining. <clears throat> and the 400 yeah, hurdles. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Did I they remember. Did they off the track for a moment? I remember. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They pulled us and they put us back. Then it was delayed. It was delayed because of the rain. And then it was delayed again because Ryan Krause just had broke the Olympic record. One, blah, blah, blah. My dad, <laughs> I heard my dad scream from behind the media pit. He screamed to me and said, stay focused, Ashley. Mind you, the stadium fits, what, 60,000, 100,000 people? He mm -hmm. screamed, stay focused, Ashley. And the very next breath, I heard my mom say, Demetra, shut up. And I'm like, are y'all kidding me? <laughs> shut up! <laughs> I thought that Ashley was about to be like, if that was what I needed to stay focused. That was what I needed right. in that moment because there was so I'm many like, distractions. The rain, the, the track, stay warm. The, no, are you kidding me? Shut up. Dad, stay focused, Ashley. Mom, shut up, Demetrius. And I'm just like, wow, it's my parents. <laughs> it, it has to be my parents that are ghetto. And, yeah. I don't have a fun loving story. It's just that's. That's, that's uh, yeah, yeah. No, that's fun loving. It is. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's reading the movies. They're nuts. Ay, ay, ay. Okay. So I want to take some more, just a couple more questions before we let y'all go. Because we're, oh, we have hit the out one hour mark. Um, I don't. They love uh, it. I saw a question earlier. I don't know where it went. Um, Morlika, do you have a favorite Nigerian restaurant in Chicago? My mother's kitchen. I knew you were going to say that. There you go. <laughs> I knew that's what I was going to say. <laughs> Why would I go to a Nigerian restaurant when I can say, Mom, can I please have some? And and the worst answer I'll get is, as long as you go to the store and go get the groceries, she'll get it. She'll make it for me. Deal. And my mom says, I'm spoiled. Okay. <laughs> All right. That's the worst answer you're gonna get. My mama will tell me straight up, no, not tonight, maybe tomorrow. But but her grandson. You just gotta send me you gotta send Liam to ask her everything. You have to send Liam him. to ask. Yep. Listen. Go ask your, go ask your grandma. We, she we have going this, here, this thing called fried bake. Um, which is it's basically a dumpling, but it's fried. And okay. Liam loves them. So she normally makes them like about about the, the size of your hand. Why does she make little mini ones for him? And then she loves them. <laughs> some weekends he stays with his dad, right? So sometimes she'll come with me to pick him up. And so before we leave, but so this last time we went to pick him up and she was like, oh, let me put together a little bacon cheese for him. I know he's going to love that. I'm just like, you are just... Me and my brother didn't get this kind of treatment. She's loving being a granny. Yes, oh, and he loves so his cute. grapes. <laughs> yes, Caribbean mothers and their grandson. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Isn't it all all grandmothers and their grandchildren? Probably. My mom is crazy when it comes to my nephews. Absolutely insane. I feel like you have to like be like the parent to your children, but then as a grandparent, you can be like, it's your job to discipline them. It's my job just to love them. Oh, 100 Yeah. I'm definitely, I mean, he's 20, almost 20 months, and I'm the one that's like, Mom, take the phone away. He's had enough <laughs> today. Like, we're going to sit down and do these shapes. <laughs> like, <enough. laughs> These shapes. Not yes. shape. I need you to learn what your triangle is, what your square is, what your circle is. <laughs> All right. Two Is more it questions. great to be a male child? Uh, I guess. <laughs> it's weird though because um, the age gap between me and my little sister is seven years, and so I didn't grow up a traditional middle child because she's like the baby of the family, and in some ways she was raised as an only child because by the time she was ten, me and my older sister were both out the house. Mm. So I'm not really like a true middle child. I'm like kind of the younger sister, but then I also have a lot of, I have younger sister and older sister tendencies, but not male child tendencies. Yeah, that's interesting because there's 12 years between my brother and I. So we both kind of experienced like the only child thing. Um, so mm -hmm. you can see that. 
Uh, Ashley was talking about running in the rain, but I wonder how do you mentally deal with false starts? Not you false starting. I mean, I mean, that happens too, though. Does it mess with your race routine at all? No, because my eyes are closed when before the gun goes off. So if you false start, I didn't see it. I didn't notice it. It didn't mess me up because when my my eyes are closed from the moment I like get settled, set, and right when the gun goes off, that's when I open my eyes. And so that's the short answer. No, not at all. You can do whatever you want. I'm not gonna see it. <laughs> to be honest. And there you have it. I was going to end there, but I'm nosy. And I come from Ooh, a, yes. not, not a Nigerian background, but a Caribbean background where education is like, so. I wouldn't say that I faced backlash from my parents, but I would say that I didn't feel like I had 100% of their full support until after my sophomore, the middle of my sophomore year of college. That's how I would answer that question because education was much, 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 much more important to them than track and field could ever be or any athletic thing could ever be. And like that was always going to be their number one priority. And track was just like the thing that I did because I loved it and they were like fine with me doing what I loved. And it was actually my sophomore year at Texas Relays. I won the 100 and I got. Uh, athlete of the meet and I was really disappointed because my parents were not there mm -hmm. and I was like everyone else's families were there watching them and you guys weren't there and I felt like they didn't they weren't behind me and I think that was also the year that they fully realized like oh she's actually really good at this and this is not just some like hobby that she does for fun that but this could be like a real career for her and then it shifted and like now I was just saying like they come to every global championship meet they're at u.s championships if i want them there they'll be there if i tell them to come they'll they'll make it happen i love that that like you had a conversation with them and or it sounds like you had a conversation with them like hey, i did i want you guys to support and they were like you know what you're right um I, and i think that's something that's missed in our communities i think we i especially my mom wasn't so bad but you know, we come from communities that like, I said what I said, you're going to do what you do. You don't have no feelings. You don't have no emotions. I don't want to hear it. I don't, but even my one-year-old has feelings and emotions <laughs> and the idea. A lot of, of them probably. Yeah. The idea that like, <laughs> we, no, they have big emotions and you have to be taught how to manage and control or not so much control, but manage your emotions. And, um, a lot of us were taught to manage them by not dealing with them. So I applaud you and your family for having that conversation and it sounds like a beautiful story. So with that, I will, and I, I so enjoyed this conversation. I almost don't want to end it, but you know, I got to go be a mom, but <laughs> Um, I will see oh. you all this Saturday, right? Um, maybe I'll see, mm, I don't know. I'm going to go do a shakeout. Are tomorrow. you running the 200, know. Tasha? Yeah. Oh, I didn't say what I was doing. Yeah, okay. we just talked about what I'm doing the 200 and the 4x4. Four four. Yeah, I remember when she said the 200 and then the 4x4 four four is literally three minutes after and she just got to keep walking. Oh. When she crossed yeah. Just keep going. Yeah, just walk a lap. Yeah. Pray for me. <laughs> pray, walk a lap. pray for me. <laughs> but guys thank you all for joining let's see there's 53 of you all still here so that means you all enjoyed the conversation i enjoyed the conversation with you ladies we'll have to have you back sometime on the road maybe i don't know um y'all see tasha and we tell her get on the road ashley and morla k because we're i mean we're amazing you are i mean are i'm we? just I mean, I wake up and tell myself that every day. So I just, I just figured I feel like everybody should do that, right? I don't know. In case anyone was wondering, this is how Ashley is in real life. All like, day, I'm just, every day. Like, she all day. Me in at my the DMs. Track. Is, she trolls me. At Tasha, practice. you love me. I do. I do. Because you are authentically you and you are who you are. And it just is what it is. You know? So, Tasha, this is fun. Next time, snacks. Yeah, next Thanks. time everybody will be vaccinated, and then we can, you know, do it safe and in person. In person, but for now, this is how we are. <laughs>
<laughs> so with that, good night, guys. Thank you all. Um, like, share. This is going to be up for you to watch later on or share with someone. Next week, we'll go back to our regular time at 4.30 and Jeremy Warner will be joining the Tea Time. So, oh, yes. Hey. Bring a friend, come chit chat, drop your questions and we're going to spill some tea. Tasha, I feel like next time we on, we should talk about the hot topics of pop culture. That's, okay. that's our thing. Let's Just do, that. We we can do a whole between separate the three of us, <laughs> Between the three of us, we got a lot of opinions. A lot to say. Listen, I watch mm-hmm. a whole lot of reality TV. We, I mean, mm-hmm. we can we can talk about some things. We could do it. I'm with it. I'm with it. All right, guys. <laughs> Bye. Yo, BJ, BJ85 is hilarious. What do you say? If oh, I learn oh, oh, fluent, oh, oh, you're oh, a well, okay, that is a dub. Came in to talk, left with a husband. That's what I'm talking about. All 2020. Okay, bye, guys. Bye. All right, bye, y'all. <laughs>